Hello everyone, this is Rainier and okay for today we have uh, a lesson about the isolated central pool. I have selected the game uh, played in 2009 in the We Can See tournament and uh, the group B uh, with white uh, making and with black Sassy Kiran. Okay, making is a chess legend and at this point in 2009 he was uh, kind of perhaps making a last comeback playing some uh, international tournaments in like we can see for example and his rating was 25.67 and Sasekiran's rating was mm, 2700 something like that um, okay I explain this because this difference between the ratings and between a, a chess lane like um, making and a young star like Sassy Kiran you will see the differences between the uh, the opening likes of each other um, making will try to play chess and avoid all the theory play a normal position and Sassy Kiran is uh, playing the latest fashion at that point alright so d4 d5 c4 e6 now e3 this is a clear sign of making trying to get the game into a position that he knows trying to avoid all kind of uh, complex lines or main theory lines like for example could arise after knight f3 knight f6 and now e3 allowing black to play bishop f5 or bishop g4 it's not that there is anything wrong with these lines it's just that perhaps making is trying just to uh, play a calm game where he has uh, chances against his young opponent also knight c3 immediately allows black to not only to play the sideline e5 which is kind of interesting in my opinion but also d takes c4 which is rather complicated too after e4 b5 now white should play a4 and but that leads to a whole different kind of position so e3 knight f6 by the way black can play here bishop f5 it is a possible move knight f6 was played in the game knight c3 and now e6 knight f3 and we have the starting position of the Simi is love defense and now okay knight bd7 is the main line and white can choose between queen c2 or bishop d3 but there is also another move here that move is a6 and it's rather popular black's idea is to well a6 is very useful in some positions and by not defining yet uh, the knight on b8 black still has uh, chances to play c6 c5 and go for uh, some sort of the Tarlash variation in which the setup with uh, e3 is not very dangerous for black okay now queen c2 again a classical move a standard move not going for the critical positions for example here c5 is is a, a critical move then black can play knight bd7 and develop with g6 bishop g7 and castle or he can play b6 immediately and after c takes on b6 knight bd7 followed by c5 with a good play and there is no clear verdict on on the theory in, in that line um, also interesting and in fashion is b3 and the idea is bishop b4 bishop d2 okay if black doesn't play bishop b4 then the bishop can be developed to b2 so it's rather uh, it's probably better for black to force bishop d2 although uh, I, it's nothing really special it's just a normal game and now after queen e7 there is a very interesting move queen e1 queen e1 with ideas of knight takes on d5 or e4 and the white has extra protection on 
on the e4 pawn. Okay, this is a move play by Aronian, so very interesting, I think. Okay, but of course, making avoided all this. Uh, okay, one of the ideas of a6 can be seen, for example, like after the normal bishop d3, black gets a very good play by playing d takes on c4, bishop takes c4, b5. Now, when whatever the bishop retreats, black plays c5, and then bishop b7, knight bd7, and it's an excellent position for black. So you can see that it's not so easy to claim an advantage with white in these lines and probably the best try in my opinion should be b3 or that or uh, c5 but I, I trust more in, in b3 okay but making play uh, queen c2 this is the standard move but it has some drawbacks now with the knight on b8 black can play c5 and that's exactly what Sasekir and play it and it turns out that the queen on c2 is not uh, in the best square it could be it will be exposed by the black rook on c8 in the future and also mm, sometimes with knight c6 knight b4 c takes d5 e takes d5 now you get the the pawn structure uh, has changed and black is likely to end up with uh, an isolated central pawn but in return he has a good uh, a good development i mean it's easy for black to develop and not so is not not so easy for for white to blockade the square d4 so okay after bishop e2 96 there isn't much to explain here both sides developing normally now castle and now black plays bishop e6 why bishop e6? Well, the idea is to start active play on the queen side and delay the development of the bishop on f8 because if black moves bishop e7 or bishop d6, white will take on c5, gaining a tempo. So, black makes an useful move and wait for white to decide uh, whether is he going to take on c5 or not and make it did take on c5 okay but before we go there let's see the alternative for for black c takes d4 for example as played by uh, Sokolov in one game now I believe that uh, knight takes d4 should be the best try for an advantage in case of knight takes d4 I mean knight takes d4, e takes d4 we we have a symmetrical pawn structure but white pieces are uh, a little more active after bishop e7 bishop f3 castle rook e1 bishop f4 rook c8 rook c1 you can see that white is uh, a little more active so he should have a small advantage after knight takes d4 perhaps mm, the best move is queen c7 and or knight takes d4 and accept that slightly worse position. Bishop d6 would be a huge mistake after knight takes on c6, b takes on c6, and now knight takes d5. Um, this discovered attack over the c6 pawn is clearly better for white. N Bishop takes on h2, nothing else. King takes, c takes d5, and now queen c5. Black's pawn structure is 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 bad and the two bishops especially the dark square bishop uh, is a big plus in in white's position all right so probably better is queen c7 then after rook d1 bishop d6 with a level position hmm. or queen b3 perhaps is even better than than rook d1 okay back to c takes d4 and okay in case of e takes d4 black equalizes by playing bishop d6 immediately then after bishop g5 black can play bishop e6 and the, the problem here as you may know from my previous lesson where I explained it, uh, this uh, structure symmetrical structures uh, 
The problem here is that white doesn't get to play knight e5 or get any control over that square. B black is very solid and d5 is easily defended. So there isn't really much for white here. Perhaps it's better to play bishop e3, but after castle, both sides uh, have the same chances, I think. Okay, little worse is bishop e7. You can see the difference between these two moves. Now white can play knight e5 and get uh, a good position. Basically because black cannot take on d4, after knight takes d4, queen a4, check with a double attack and then after knight c6 knight takes, b takes e6 and now not queen takes e6 because of bishop d7 when the queen moves then d4 and black gets good counterplay so but instead knight takes d5 is very strong then if queen takes d5 white has uh, bishop f3 and if castle, knight takes on e7, queen takes, and bishop f3, two bishops and a superior pawn structure give it gives white a, a clear clear advantage in this position. All right, let's get back to the game in which Christian Sasikibran played uh, bishop e6, and now d takes on c5. This is the more straightforward move. White is clearly going for the isolated pawn type of position why because rook d1 is in theory it is better but it fails for tactical reasons I, I mean it doesn't fail but white doesn't get what he wants after knight b4 queen b1 and now queen c8 with the threat of bishop f5 this is the problem with rook d1 then white has to play something like bishop d2 but after bishop f5 queen c1 and now c4 it looks like black has a solid position and he's going to play knight d3 on the next move and this was played by Wojtasek with the white pieces against uh, Sokolov eventually black won, the position is complicated mm maybe a, a move here is rook e1 trying to play knight takes d5 and e4 but in general lines I think black is is okay nothing to fear okay so this is why why chose to play uh, d takes e5 and then after bishop takes e5 the bishop is developed in one move but black uh, white cannot help it there is no way to avoid to avoid this you can see that black is very well developed all the minor pieces are out and he's ready to castle on the next move and white would wish his queen was on the one so he could play something like uh, quickly b3 bishop b2 the queen is uncomfortable on c2 because of rook c8 coming soon so rook d1 queen is 7 okay uh, normal move, getting out of the d file, then after a3, castle b4. Okay, making prepares to develop his bishop from c1 to b2 and gain some space on the queen side as well. Then bishop d6. Okay, in this type of positions, um, the most important thing, in my opinion, is control over the square in front of the isolated pawn, this square d4 in this case um, I like to retreat to a7 or in the in the pan of variation of the Karokan I usually place the bishop on a2 of course there is nothing wrong with bishop d6 attacking uh, h2 as well uh, it's, it's just a matter of taste I think uh, with bishop a7 uh, black uh, keeps more chances of playing d5 d4 in the future that's one of the strategies for uh, the side who who has the isolated pawn to advance it to to actually uh, achieve this rupture which 
should uh, give him uh, the initiative in the future. For example, after bishop b2, then rook c8, rook c1, rook fd8, and black is ready to play d5, d4 in, in any minute. Okay, and b5 by white uh, could be met by knight a5 immediately, not taking on b5 because of knight takes b5, but maybe knight a5 and going to c4. That's one way to play this position. Of course, black uh, white can play b5, but then a takes, knight takes, and bishop b6 seems fine. Rook fc8. There is no time to bring the rook to c1. Um, position looks balanced, in my opinion. Okay, bishop d6 was the move played in the game. Bishop b2, rook c8, rook c1, and now rook fd8. Both sides. Uh, have developed all of the pieces and the strategy is clear white wants to uh, achieve a blockade on d4 also he will try to trade uh, as much pieces as as possible and black will try completely the opposite he should try for active play with pieces try to um, create chances of attack on the king side so Okay, and most important, he will try to force d4. That's, that will either give him the initiative or e equalize completely. Okay, in this position, first white play queen b1, trying to, well, the idea is get out of the c file because the rook on c8 and the queen on c2 don't match. So now black went a5, and this is the move that I don't like. This is the move that I, I think it's going uh, against the principles of the the position. Sasikiran is trying active play on the queen side, but he should probably play in the center and prepare d4 uh, somehow. Maybe bishop b8 is uh, is a better move. Then after knight a4, going to c5 black can try knight e4 treat the position like um, I don't know I, like a pan of variation of the Karokan it's, it's the same position only only that the cores are, are reversed and in this type of position it looks like there is the only way to for black to play is uh, to play active like this for example if bishop d3 now Black can try things like bishop g4, and then if knight b6, bishop takes on f3. Well, knight b6 is not the best move, g takes on f3. We can see that black has chances after knight takes on f2, king takes, queen h4, king f1, queen h3, king e1, queen h4, and white should repeat back to f1, because king d2, queen f2, Bishop e2, and now the advance we were talking about d4 exposing the white king is very dangerous for white. Probably this is a losing position for white. So king f1 and is a draw. So bishop d3 is not possible after knight e4, at least not uh, not a good option. Then knight c5 is slightly better, but after bishop f5, queen a1, and f6, it looks like black is is solid. White still has uh, there is a, a still an interesting uh, strategical position ahead of us, and then after knight d4, White has some good knights in the center, but still no uh, nothing concrete. I think even here, after in, instead of a uh, rook f d8. Black could try immediately knight e5, which is going to c4 or g4. Then after knight takes on e5, bishop takes. It's very difficult for white to to avoid the move d4. For example, queen d2, rook fd8, and if the knight moves, the knight from c3, 
then black plays knight d4 and if you place bishop f3 then it is probably the best move but then d4 and black has no no real problems after he takes bishop takes not uh, rook takes because knight d5 hmm? but bishop takes and white has to move the queen probably to e1 or e2 with a with a level position here doesn't mean it's a draw but it's, it's equal okay rook fd8 queen b1 and then a5 this is the first move that is uh, compromising for black b takes on a5 also the problem with the move is that it gives the gives away the b5 square as well then after knight b5 for example probably black was intending to play a takes b4 because bishop b8 knight g5 and there is some serious threats on the king side g6 would weaken a lot the the king side opening that diagonal for the bishop on b2 and there is no other way to to prevent bishop takes on f6 and queen h7 so so a takes before i guess and then knight takes e6 queen takes pawn takes before and queen takes before not knight takes because of bishop a3 the knight is lost but queen takes before and in this position probably white has to play bishop takes f6 g takes on f6 and now queen a1 black has uh, an extra pawn but his his king side is uh, the pawn structure on the queen's on the king side is ruined and there is a pawn on b7 that white could put uh, a lot of pressure on so i guess white has compensation perhaps not enough to win but uh, probably he's not worse at all okay making play in b, b takes on a5 of course white is very interested like i said before in trading pieces so if the whole queen side disappears is even better and now bishop takes on a3 consequent because knight takes knight b5 white uh, gets uh, to blockade on d4 with the bishop or the b5 knight and gets uh, an excellent position so bishop takes on a3 now making plays a6 getting rid of the weak pawn on a5 bishop takes b2 queen takes b2 bishop takes on a6 and rook b8 okay after the trade of pieces especially the dark square bishops you can see that now um, the the black weakness remains i mean the position is not equal uh, why still holds uh, a slight advantage and now with the absence of the dark square bishop is even better because he can control d4 easier first step is to place the queen in a this is square e2 because uh, as we will see in the in the game is the is a very useful square especially uh for the maneuver that we're going to see in the in the following moves now black plays knight b4 perhaps not the best move why because i think black should keep control over d4 that's the uh, main problem for black here is the square d4 that if white gets full control over that square with the knight then it will be very difficult for black to play knight before h3 you can see that white has no problems with the knight taking on a6 then after queen a6 uh, the two knights will be very strong one on d4 maybe the other the other is fine on c3 but the other could be on f4 as well and the knight the the black knight on b4 is the only active active piece in, of black so it doesn't make sense to trade the knight so now instead of knight b4 he should have played something like queen a3 with an eye on a6 and, and 
on on b2 for the rook then after bishop d3 rook b2 white can try knight b5 queen b4 and rook c2 just a little better position for white nothing nothing more than that okay but knight b4 h3 and now black went knight e4 trying to get rid of the pawn black realizes that the chances for counterplay are slipping away um, things are not working the, the, the way he wanted and white is building a solid position and he's getting ready to play uh, knight d4 as he did now and this is something that black cannot change this is why it was important to keep control over this square and also the trade of the dark square bishop was a strategical uh, mistake now there is nothing black can do to get rid of the knight on d4 and it's a very strong knight rook d6 trying to start counterplay on the third rank bishop d3 but white now wants to put pressure on e4 force the trade of the minor pieces and if possible end up playing a, an endgame with the rooks with the heavy pieces against the and the knight on d4 against the bishop on e6 that's what that's what he wants for example after knight takes on d3 queen takes on d3 the pressure in the center is, is too strong and probably black has to take on c3 and after queen takes on c3 it, it would be a very very passive position for black so bishop d7 black must keep the pieces if he if he wants to uh, create counterplay so his plan is now to go rook g, rook g6 or rook f6 maybe force the trade on e4 and somehow defend by by means of counterplay but making plays a very nice move bishop b5 going after the bishop going after a second trade that will uh, increase his advantage bishop b5 this time is forced bishop e6 doesn't work this time y can take on e4 and after d takes on e4 take on e6 and the bishop on c4 uh, will be stronger than the knight on b4 knights are not good when when they don't have outpost uh, in the center you can see that the knight doesn't have a, a steady square uh, to be and the bishop is much more active for example queen takes on e6 bishop c4 rook takes d1 now if queen e5 rook d7 so if queen f5 g4 queen c5 and now rook d4 the weakness on on e4 starts starts to tell so you can see that black had no choice but to trade the light square bishops with bishop takes b5 and after knight d takes b5 black is in a desperate situation still he should have played rook d8 um, and just uh, stay uh, passive defending the d5 pawn after the move rook d4 knight back to f6 black cannot afford to trade more pieces after knight takes on c3 knight takes on c3 white's position is very very good queen e5 queen d2 and the plan is simple just put pressure on d5 rook d1 there are threats like e4 eventually white will uh, win the d5 pawn so black should not trade anymore play back knight f6 and then after queen b2 forcing the knight to retreat to a6 because knight c6 allows knight takes d5 knight a6 and then queen a1 with ideas like rook a4 and rook a7 white is pressing but not winning yet this was better than the game in the game um, Krishna looking desperately for counterplay he went rook f6 
the, but this is a this is a I mean this is a typical situation here when you have the isolated pawn. I I explain it because I've it has happened to me as well when you have the isolated pawn you want to in principle to start playing active because everybody knows this and but uh, once the game gets uh, going and your chances are slipping away you s you don't realize when is the right time to uh, start thinking about defense and, you and after rook f6 white gets a uh, a winning advantage and by a four sequence with knight takes on e4 then black takes on e4 and this allows the white rook to uh, go into the 7th rank after rook c7 also look at the knight on b4 is uh, very very exposed to threats like queen c4 with uh, attacks on b4 and c8 so now black's position is uh, is critical Queen e5. If Queen e6 trying to keep control of uh, c4, then White has the very strong move Rook b7, which puts the Knight on 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 b4 in danger to moves like Knight d4 or Knight c7. And okay, Black cannot take on on b7 because of the back rank mate with Rook d8. So after queen c8, rook takes, and knight c3, the e4 pawn uh, is lost. On the next move, rook e6, queen c4, and that's it. There is no defense for the e4 pawn. So black went queen e5, queen c4, the knight is in trouble. Black played h5. Okay, queen takes b4 is not possible because of... Uh, Rook takes b5, or or even queen takes e7. Yeah, queen takes e7 is even better. So he go he goes h5, giving the king some escape. But now making plays knight c3, and again the weak e4 pawn is Black's problem. I found a very interesting line with uh, computer help with knight d6 which is very very strong it seems like it's winning for example if rook takes d6 queen takes on f7 king h8 and then rook takes on d6 the the black queen is over overload defending g7 and the rook so it's impossible to take the white knight and it's also impossible to defend f7 after rook d8 pinning the knight black uh, white goes rook f7 and if queen e6, rook takes g7. This is a move. It's very difficult to see, but uh, it leads to a win. King takes, queen c7, check. Rook d7, knight e8. Queen takes, rook takes d7. And now if rook f7, then the knight on, c on b4 is lost. After queen c3, check. King h7 and queen b4 with a winning endgame. So king a6, and then rook a7. If king g5, queen g3 check. King f5, queen f4. If king g6, rook a6 wins. If king e6, queen takes on e4, and queen takes b4, and on. So, well, queen takes on e8 as well. So king g6 is better, but then rook g7, king a6 and then g4 uh, the threat is g5 so after pawn takes the threat is still g5 followed by queen h2 and mate soon so knight d6 was definitely win but there is nothing wrong with uh, that of course there is a lot of uh, calculation behind th this move so uh, it's not the type of move for for this position why simply prefer to play knight c3 the plan the idea was always to put pressure on e4 to gain the pawn and that's what he what he does right now after knight c3 there is no way to defend the e4 pawn black goes knight d3 attacking f2 but 
After white takes, he also defends f2 and attacks the rook on f6. Rook g6, the last mistake, surrendering the f7. It was better to play rook e6, but still after rook c8, I guess making was going to play rook c8. Uh, also possible is to play queen c3, but I don't see... It looks very uh, much like a computer move. After queen e4, queen takes e3 is similar. But I guess rook c8 is enough. Rook takes, queen takes, rook e8, and then queen d7. Okay. Probably black is losing, but still there is uh, some technical problems to win this. Not easy to uh, to convert into a full point. Okay, after rook g6, queen takes on f7, king h7, and then rook e7, attacking the queen. And also the knight on the three is under attack, so queen b5, h4, threatening knight g5, knight e5, queen f5. This is the end of the game. Is nothing. There is nothing black can do, and uh, white's position is just uh, crushing. Queen e2, knight g5 check, king h8, and now rook f1. Yes, solid. Uh, defending everything and black loses a piece because the knight on e5 is under attack and also if the knight moves the rook d6 is is also attacked so after queen b2 queen takes on e5 and here Sasaki ran uh, resigns okay I thought this uh, this was a very interesting game I I was installing it recently and wanted to share with you okay guys if there's anything uh, you want to say leave it in the comments and I will be happy to respond thanks for watching this is Rainier and